Hi, testing, testing. Hi, everyone. Okay, I see a lot of people joining. Let me just share my screen. everyone hi hi anthony hi fh chu hi gerald hi harsh justin kasser lila muhammad jajin raj ray richard hi richard <laughs> i feel like i've seen your name just recently uh tuli tato Yes, Webster, Joy, there's more of you joining. So let's just wait for everyone to join. And then we can, it is, okay. <laughs> uh, you are in my morning's webinar, are you? Just checking. Okay. Uh, I, did you see the gold trade playing out very nicely? I'm, I'm so sad. Uh, I didn't get in because I was hoping like, like I was saying this morning, right? I my entry is always at the bottom, at the bottom, bottom. I try to get in at the best possible entry. So a lot of times I don't get in because I miss it miss my entry, doesn't trigger my entry. But that's that's fine as long as the analysis is correct. More importantly, the analysis is correct. That means we have a lot of opportunity to find more winning trades. Hi Tilly. Hi, hi yo, hi, hi Eugene. Okay, uh, there's a lot of you joining still. I still see the uh, attendance list moving quite a bit. So we will start in a minute, like 5.32 p.m. Singapore time. I'll introduce myself in a while. Hi Eugene, nice to meet you too. I'll introduce myself in a while. In the meantime, let's just wait for everyone else to join because I still see the attendance list moving quite a bit. Okay, I'll come back in a minute. In the meantime, while everyone's joining, I'm gonna just go grab a bottle of water. I'll be back. Okay, cool. I am back. Um, hey everyone. Record without unmute myself. I am unmuted. Everyone can hear me, right? Zoom just asked me to unmute myself, but um I can see my mic moving. I can see that I'm unmuted. Everyone can hear me and can see my screen. Can you just double confirm in the chat box so that I know I'm not talking to myself? Uh, nobody's replying, so I don't know if you guys can hear me. Okay, thank you, Richard. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Harsh. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Webster. Okay, cool. Uh, before we start today's webinar, I'm going to do an introduction, and you guys let me know where you guys are from. Once I'm done with the introduction, I'll go through some of the places you guys are from. I do want to know where you guys are from, actually, because I want to know what the like, time zone is and whatnot. Okay, so hi everyone from everywhere. I see a lot of replies coming in already. UK, Germany, Philippines, Singapore. Okay, uh, 
Welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Tick Mill. Okay, it's an ultimate forex trading masterclass. The whole point of this webinar, Malaysia, South Africa, another South African. Okay, the whole point of this webinar is to help you guys improve in your trading and help you grow your trading account. Oh, Australia. Okay, so if I like to know where you guys are from because I want to know if there's a country I've never been to yet. Johannesburg, been there, India, been there, Australia, been there, Malaysia, Malaysia, I am Malaysian, although I am, I well, I'm kind of Singaporean now, because I, I've been living here for so long, but yes. Um, okay, the whole point is to help you guys grow your account. Um, okay, so a disclaimer before we start, please, please, re okay, I've never been to Nigeria. Please remember that this webinar should only be construed as educational, okay? It should not be construed as financial advice or investment advice or any kind of, you know, trading advice, okay? This is not a signals group. It's not a forecasting group. The whole point is to learn how to trade or be better at trading. So even though it says live analysis session today or strategy clinic, okay? It's basically me trading and I'll show you guys how I usually take my trade and I, how usually, I usually analyze. Okay, so then you guys can try to implement it into your own trading style if you agree. If you agree. Okay, so again, Trading Forex and CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. So just be careful. Okay, so other than that, let me do a quick introduction. We're gonna do live trading session. Um, basically what we're gonna do is go onto the chart. Okay, I'll look, I'll talk about agenda in a while, but I'm gonna introduce myself for those who don't already know me. How long is this session? It is one hour. Okay, so in this one hour, I'll try my best to squeeze as much as I can, but ultimately, I don't want to like squeeze information. I don't want to rush through this webinar. I ultimately want you guys to digest as well and learn something because if not, then it will defeat the purpose of the entire webinar. Okay, for those who don't already know me, my name is Cassandra. You can call me Cass. Okay, um, I am an investment analyst and a prop trader at Everest Fortune Group. Okay, we're a Singapore-based company. Okay, we basically do a lot of research. We're the finalists for best forex and best equity research for 2019, 2020, and 2021. 2022 is not out yet. That's why it's not posted here. But basically, we do a lot of research and forecasting and backtesting to see where the markets are going. Once we have this information, we advise. Afternoon. Hi, Marby. Okay, we advise hedge funds, brokerages, banks financial institutions and you guys on this webinars where we think the markets are going. But of course, please, please do not take this as a signal scoop again. Okay. So other than that, I am a full-time prop trader. Okay. Um, <laughs> prop trading, for those who don't know what that means is how you become a prop trader. Well, in my case, is I took a few tests. You need to pass this test. Once you pass this test, the, the prop firms will fund you and then you trade for the prop firms and they give you a profit sharing. Okay, so I've passed this test about six times now. It's not that easy to pass. Only less than 2% of people ever pass this test. I think it's only 1.5% actually. Okay, of people ever pass this test. A few thousand people take this test on a monthly basis and a lot of them fail. Okay, I mean, there's many reasons to that as well. Um, other than that, how I did pass this test is by using technical analysis, okay? So this test requires a trader to do eight to 10% within a month. A month is 30 days usually, okay? But there's only 22 trading days because the weekends are not counted. So you need to do your eight to 10% within a month without a drawdown of 5%. So the minute you have a drawdown of more than 5%, you immediately fail, okay? There's a lot of strict rules. So how I did that again was technical analysis. So I do specialize in technical analysis. If you guys have any questions regarding technical analysis, please ask me in the chat box. Don't be shy. Again, this webinar is to help you grow. So if you have any questions that will help you improve as a trader, please don't be shy. Please just ask in the chat box. Okay, so uh, 
other than that, if it's fundamental analysis, please don't ask me. Okay, I am very bad at fundamental analysis. My trading does not involve fundamental analysis at all. Anytime there's a major news event, I just don't trade for that day. Okay, I don't see the point in forcing trades. I don't see the point in chasing trades every single day. I think it's more important to get high probability setups and high probability trades. Okay, other than that, um, our agenda for today would be to look at three pairs. Okay, um, we've got 50 minutes left. I'll try to look at three pairs. If I'm not spending too much on one chart, I usually am able to cover three pairs. The three pairs will be one pair commodity. How do we know when you do this webinars? But I've seen several things. Oh, okay, good question, Hamid. So Hamid is asking, when do I, like how would you guys know if I'm doing this webinars? Okay, the thing is, um, <laughs> I only have one and a half months left with you guys. I will be taking you guys, I was looking at the schedule and I'll be taking you guys every Monday. So same time every Monday for the next one and a half months. So why one and a half months is because I am uh, seven months pregnant now. Okay, so I'm going to give, um, I love your webinars, but yours not on that often. Uh, yes. Okay, so after one and a half month, I am going to be giving birth. It's a girl. Yes, I'm going to teach my girl how to trade from a very young age. Okay, thank you so much. So I will be going maternity. I won't be coming back after that because I want to be, a, I'm going to be a full-time mom. And that's the one thing I actually want to encourage you guys is to improve your skills in trading because because of trading, I am able to be a full-time mom. I, I can safely say that because of trading, trading has allowed me to be a full-time mom because um. I don't have to worry about income. I can still trade while being a mom. Trading doesn't occupy a lot of my time. So this is a very school of, it is a very good skill to have. I really recommend you guys mastering this skill. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so yes, I only have one and a half more months with you guys and then I will be going to be a full-time mom. But um, I have shared in these webinars a few times. If you guys want to join, get in touch with me on Telegram, I'll, I'll share my Telegram username in a while. But if you email me or you text me now on Telegram, I will not be replying. Okay, because... So every Monday for the next five to six weeks. Yeah, that's right. Because... Um, I'm getting ready to give birth and become a mom, right? So I'm quite busy this period. But when I become a full-time mom, I can imagine, I won't be doing these webinars anymore. I'll be stepping away from the other things that I'm doing, which is my uh, my businesses, okay? I'll be stepping away from a lot of things to be a full-time mom. So I can imagine when the baby's sleeping or whatnot, I'll be quite bored. So I will be starting a Telegram group if you guys want to, to join. So maybe once in a while, I'll just share where I think the markets are going. It's totally free. It's just my opinion. It's just my opinion, okay? I'm not associated to anyone, okay? So if you guys want to join that, I'll share my Telegram group late chat later. I'll share my chat, Telegram chat later, but please take note that I will not be replying now until I'm a little bit more free, then I'll be replying. Like, I was looking at my chat and I, I'm so sorry. I know a lot of you have PM me. I have like about 40 plus unread uh, private messages from you guys. It's all from wanting to join the trading group. So please bear with me. I will reply when I'm a bit more free, which is in a few months. At this period of time, I'm rushing a lot of things, but I will try my best. Okay, so let's back to the webinar. webinar. Let's, I'll, I'll try to cover as much as I can today. Okay, so graphical levels. We'll look for support and resistance, finding momentum, and then we'll find confluence, and then we'll take the trade. Okay, so that's basically our agenda for today. Um, that's all, folks. <laughs> This is Tignal's info if you guys need anything. Other than that, I'm going to quickly just open TradingView. Just give me a sec. Oops. Give me a sec because I am required to share something with you guys. Okay. Uh, okay, never mind. So this is my trading view. Uh, Richard, who I... Um, I did another webinar this morning, okay, Richard attended, so Richard show, saw that I called this trade this morning, so I had a week to meet buyers of the of a buy for gold, and uh, it's working out pretty well, I would say, my entry for gold was here, I myself didn't get into this trade because my entry was 1993, but you guys can see at 1995, it actually reversed 
very, very nicely. Actually, at 1995, it would have been a very beautiful entry. Um, too bad I missed this trade as well. Oh, yes, by the way, uh, I do want to share with you guys. I'm very happy to let you guys know that as of today, today's 17th of April, uh, I am 4% in profit for the month. So if I had gotten into this trade, I would have ended the day. Your stop loss is short. We have no risk. Uh, no, it's a one to five trade, okay? I would have ended the day with at least a 6.5% profit for the month. But I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get into this trade because I was very ambitious with my entry. But the good thing is the analysis is correct. Most importantly is the analysis needs to be correct because if you can get it correct one time, means you can get it correct the second time, the third time, the fourth time, okay? So today I'm going to show you how to get accurate entries, how to get how to get high probability setups, okay? But of course, we still need to look at the chart. Sometimes you look at the chart and the structure is not good and I cannot force the chart to give me an entry if there's no entry, but yes, go ahead and entry, just missed it by a few points for me, okay? I put, I told, uh, I told Richard and the rest of them that this morning that this zone here, this box here was the perfect area for the entry. It's just that, the entry can be anywhere within this box. So I told them to try to aim as low as possible. The problem is trying to aim as low as possible is that there might be a chance you won't get in because you're aiming for the best entry. There's a chance you might you might not get in. So you can see at 1995, it was a very, very nice bounce here. It should be making its way nicely to this entry. Should be, okay? Should I get in now? No, you should not get in now. You should not get in now. Oh, can you guys not see my charts? Can we see your charts, please? Um, I am on XAO USD. Can you guys let me know if you can just see my charts? Okay, cool. So everyone can see my charts, right? I'm just showing what uh, we pulled up this morning. Hopefully, Okay, XAUUSD is my, I specialize in XAUUSD. Okay, usually out of 10 trades, I get XAUUSD correct eight of the time. So now that XAUUSD is already on its way to take profit, please do not get into this trade because please keep this in mind. Keep this in mind, okay? This is very important. The win should be at entry. Your win should be at entry. Okay, that means... Uh, I'm going to give you guys a more another example so some of you can relate with me. Let's say you are buying a piece of property, okay? Instead of buying the property at 100000 wouldn't it be better if you got your property at 50000 Because when you sell it, you make 50000 more. It's the same with trading, okay? It would be so much better if your entry is good, okay? Your entry only makes sense if it was here. If it's here where price is already so high and it's already on the way to the take profit, Okay, it doesn't make sense because what if from here price just reverse? What if from here price decides not to go to the take profit area? Okay, so please do not get into this trade, although the bias is that price is going up, but because price is not at our ideal or the best entry, I do not recommend you guys going up, going into this trade. Okay, so that's one thing uh, about today's trade. Another thing is that I do want to show you guys something. Hold on, give me a sec. Traders Club. Okay, for those who are not already in our Traders Club, you guys can go into this. So as long as you have, okay, I'm going to open a new link. So Traders um, Club dot ticknail dot com slash app. Okay, so if you guys for those who don't already have this, you don't already have a free account, you haven't already joined this, I recommend that you get an account. Just go to traderstab.tickmail.com. Okay, it's a bit laggy. I don't know if it's my Wi-Fi or not. It shouldn't be my Wi-Fi. Okay, just create an account. Okay, so just create an account. Register now. You can create an account. Once you create an account, you will have access to this. So every one of you, as long as you have a live trading account with TickMail, you are allowed to create an account for free. 
Okay, so what does this uh, entail you once you create an account? Um, I now need to type in my password and I log in account. So I'm gonna have to drag this screen away so you guys can see my password. But once you create it, you will have access to a lot of cool features. By the way, can I just check if anyone already has an account? Do you guys already have an account? Yes, 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 no. Okay, for those who said no, just go and create. For those, actually, a lot of you answered yes. So I guess a lot of you already have this account. Okay, so I'm not going to go into it because uh, number one, it's taking a while to load. I don't want to spend so much time with that. I want to spend more time on the charts. Okay, let's go on the charts. We missed that initial trade for gold. That's totally fine. Let's see if there is a second entry that we can get in on. Okay, I'm going to try to look for a second entry for gold because I myself want to get in on gold. Um, I'm 4% in profit for the month. I'm hoping to end the month in 10%. Okay, I have, let me see, it's already the 17th, 13 more, 13 more days. Hopefully, we can end the month with lots of profit. Uh, okay, let's see what information I can gather. Okay, first things first, I do need to explain to you guys what I'm doing. If not, there's no reason for you to join my webinar, right? Because you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, number one, I need to look for trend. So uptrend or downtrend, um, I'm going to give you guys the answer. Usually, I do let you guys answer. But because I want to quickly get, I want to cover more charts today. So I'm going to just uh, kind of like give you guys the answers. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, is price going up or down? So one look, for me, it's going up. If you guys see that it's going down, let me know in the chat box and let me know why you think it's going down, okay? But it is going up because it's making higher highs and higher lows, okay? You can't see your screen. Hi, DS. Um, I think everyone can see my screen. I'm not sure if it's just you. I did ask if everyone can see my screen and everyone said yes. Can, yep, yep. Johan just replied. He said, can see my screen. Eddie just replied, can see my screen. Ram, Marby. Salgado, everyone can see my screen. So I think uh, Hamid can see my screen, Samson, Paul. I think maybe you want to exit the webinar and rejoin. I'm not sure if it's just you. Yeah, maybe just exit and rejoin. Uh, everyone can see my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. I'm going to continue. Hopefully, uh, don't worry. By the time you come back in, you wouldn't have missed much. Okay, so I'm going to explain again. You need to answer the first question. Question number one, is price going up or down? Price is going up. Why? Because it's making higher highs, higher lows. I'm going to try to see if I can fit a channel here. Because if I can fit a channel, I'm going to use this channel as a reference to where I think price is going. Okay, channel doesn't fit. That's totally fine. I'm going to just move on. Price is going up based on higher high, higher low rule. Okay, second thing I want to do, highlight support and resistance. Highlight support and resistance. I'm going to highlight support and resistance closest to price because this is where your entry, your stop loss, your take profit is going to be. It is very important for you to know how to identify support and resistance. Very easy as well. It's basically just swing high. There's a swing high here. There is a swing high here. There is kind of like a bit of rejection here. That's why I'm taking this area as the support. It's not the best support, but it is the closest one that I can find. Unless I want to take this one into consideration, I can as well. Okay, I can consider this one into consideration. Oh wait, I will definitely consider this into consideration because this was my entry for my morning's webinar. Okay, so that's uh, that. Okay, that's that. Okay, uh, that's all the information I've collected on the daily time frame. I'm going to change the name of this to resistance because I want to keep my charts clean and I want to have enough information on my charts. Okay, I don't want to like, let's say I take a break. Let's say I go, I decide to watch Netflix. And then when I come back and look at my charts, I don't even know what I'm drawing. So you need to keep your, like, okay, I personally keep my charts very clean because a lot of times when I don't mark my stuff, I don't note down things. When I come back, I go and like cook dinner, for example, and I come back, I don't even know why I drew certain things. Like I don't even remember. So 
just make your life easy. Just mark everything. Okay, other than that, can you guys give me like 10 seconds? I just need to close this window. I can hear my neighbors playing basketball. Just give me 10 seconds to close this window. I'll Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Um, okay, I've collected all the information that I can collect on the daily time frame. Let's see what else I can collect. Other than support resistance, I think down because the double top and the bull candles are closing momentum because of the start of our trend. They were strong. Then at the top, they are starting to short be short and size and bears are gaining momentum. I do agree with you. I do think the bears are gaining momentum. Because this morning when I went down to the smaller time frame, in the smaller time frames, I can see a lot of trend reversal signs, signs of trend reversal. On the bigger time frames, it's still slightly bullish, but on the smaller time frames, I'm starting to see bearish momentum. So I do agree with you, there's a possibility of trend reversal. Um, at this current point of time, I'm hoping to catch one more buy before the trend reversal. If the trend does reverse, uh, then let it reverse. But before it reverse, I was hoping to just catch a quick buy and then when wherever it decides to reverse, um, I'll enter for a sell, right? But at this current point in time, I'm still a bit biased on a buy, although the smaller time frame, small time frame meaning the one hour, the 15 minutes are all already showing uh, trend reversal, okay? Trend reversal always starts on the smaller time frame and then it will make it way it'll make its way to the bigger time frame. So the smaller time frame is already showing that it's a sell. Okay, so it might be risky going in for a buy, but um, I was hoping to catch just one more buy before the sell happens. Okay, so this is what I've gathered. We're now on the four hours. Okay, I'm going to use Fibonacci to kind of get a few levels that I think price is going to reverse off. Okay, there's a 23.6 there, it's nice. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Probably a very pathetic 100% here. Okay, nope, for those who don't know what I'm doing, I'm basically using Fibonacci levels. I cannot teach you guys Fibonacci levels today because we don't have time, okay? But I'm basically using Fibonacci levels to find the strength of certain support and resistance area. That means the chances of price going to this area and reversing, okay? So this is the exact same thing uh, for Richard. She already, he already saw me do this, okay? So... This is for the benefit of the rest of them. Okay. You know what? There's a very strong confluence at 199. A very strong confluence. Okay, at this current point in time, I am still biased with my morning's uh, analysis that price. So there is a 50% Fibonacci retracement, a 78.6 Fibonacci projection, and a 23.6 Fibonacci retracement, all lining up in the exact same area. Okay, they are all lining up at the 190 to the 191 area. Okay, that means when price, kindly show me your FIP setups. Okay, FIP set is very, what is resistance? Okay, FIP, okay, let me answer one question at a time, okay? You know what? Uh, I was going to try to brush more charts today, but I think, again, more importantly, is I answer your questions. If not, if I don't help you answer these questions, then you will not be able to grow as a trader. Okay, but for those who are very experienced in trading, you, you might be, uh, you might, your aim is to look at more charts, but I also need to help those who are a bit, uh, like, who are a bit new to trading as well. Okay, so FIB, right? 
before you even use it, you need to identify a few patterns. So these are the few patterns that you want to identify. One is a Fibonacci extension. This is a Fibonacci retracement, a Fibonacci projection, and a Fibonacci expansion. Okay, so on the charts right now, what I am seeing is a Fibonacci retracement. Okay, it's basically this pattern right here, but inversed. Okay, so it's basically inversed. If you see this pattern, that means you can plot a Fibonacci. So what you do is you take the swing low and the swing high, and then you pull out the Fibonacci setting. Okay, the Fibonacci settings are 21.6, 38.2, 50%, 61.8, and 78.6. And then you see out of these five levels, if there are other horizontal levels that line up. Horizontal levels are support and resistance. If just nice, you see a horizontal level lining up with a Fibonacci. That tells me as a trader, as a trader, when I see this, I'm super happy because it tells me this is a very strong point of barrier. There's a very strong point of resistance in this area. When price gets here, it's going to have a very hard time breaking and it will have no choice but to reverse. And therefore, as a trader, this is where I enter for the buy. Okay, for those who have never heard me use this theory before, this is Bob. Hi, Jamilu. I was just saying this is Bob and then Jamilu says good day, Bob. Okay, so this is Bob. Bob is going to the right. For people like Jamilu, he's heard this example a hundred times already. Okay, he's walking to the right. He reaches a door. If the door is locked, if the door is heavy, it's made out of stone. If there's a lot of heavy boxes behind the door, uh, Bob is going to try to open the door. He's going to fail. He's going to open the door. He's like, oh, this door is so heavy. And what is he going to do? He's going to give up and he's going to turn back. Okay, this is the same with price. Price will come here, realize that it's going to have a very hard time breaking this barrier, this support area. And here, it's going to turn back. And when it turns back, people like me, traders like me will be waiting to get in for the buy. Okay, that's why I say, I always say in all my webinars, it is so crucial for you to be able to master identifying support and resistance. Support and resistance is your bread and butter when it comes to trading. Because if you can identify strong support and resistance, that means you can identify strong areas of buy and sell entry. Okay, that's why the difference of being a very good trader and just an average trader is the ability to identify very good entries. Look, I, anyone, like if we look at the chart, 10 people can tell me, oh, it's going up. Okay, if it's going up, where do you get in for the buy? That's why you need to master technical analysis because technical analysis will help you narrow down where the buy is going to be. So using technical analysis, I, can, I have already narrowed down that 90 to 9, 1990, 1991 is the area of possible buy because 50% Fibonacci retracement lines up there. 78.6 Fibonacci projection lines up here. 23.6 Fibonacci retracement lines up here. All three of these Fibonacci levels all line up in the exact same area and it lines up at this swing low here. It lines up at this swing low here, which actually aligns with... Oops. Trying to show you guys, actually aligns with this two swing high here. So it's actually an overlap. So this area is a very, very, very strong area of support. I want to be ready to get in for a buy when price gets to this area. Okay, so true enough, we can see. Let me get rid of all this drawing. We can see price coming to this area. Price came here, and what did it do? It bounced. This is where you get in for your buy. Okay, this is where you get in for your buy. I would have put my take profit here. Okay, why? Because I'll put it at the next swing high or the next swing low, the next support resistance. Why? Because price is always attracted to key levels. Key levels meaning support and resistance. Price, if Bob goes and opens this door and he fails to open this door, he turns back, there's going to be another door behind him. Okay, there's going to be another door behind him and he's going to try to open this door now. Okay, so if price reverses from here, where is it going to go? It's going to go to the next 
support and resistance level because that is the next door that Bob is trying to open. I see you pulled a fit on the H4 time frame. Is it best to is this the best time frame to draw fit on? Okay, no. Uh, you can draw fits on all time frame. You can draw fits on all time frame. Is supply zone same as resistance? Yep. So uh supply and resistance is kind of like the supply demand zone. That is the key levels. Uh very good question. It's just a lot of these trading things are just terms. You know, I book today, I didn't even bother to remember a lot of the trading terms because I feel like it's it's just gonna confuse me. It's all the same meaning in different words and different names. What is the point of it? It's just gonna confuse the trader. Okay, so yes, it, support resistance is kind of like the supply and demand zone. Okay, actually it, it basically is the supply and demand zone. Okay, um time H4, H4 is not the best time frame to draw on. All time frames are good for Fibonacci, depending on your style of trading. If you are a swing trader, I am a day trader slash swing trader. So I always look at the daily and then the H4, and then sometimes I look at the H1. So that's my time frame that I look at. But if you are a scalper, you can still use Fibonacci on one hour, 15 minutes, uh, five minutes. You can still use it on a small time frame. It will still work. It will still work. Yeah. Okay, so I think for goal, and the whole reason of me reanalyzing gold is because I'm trying to find a second entry for gold. Because we already missed this entry. 1991 was like the perfect entry to get in and out of buy. We already missed this. I'm trying to see where we can get in again. If the structures won't allow me, then I'm not going to get in. Okay, I'm not going to force a trade. I'm not going to force a trade. If I don't see a very strong graphical. Okay. I guess I see something. I guess I see something. Should we use this? Okay. I'm going to give you my analysis. Okay. At the end of the day, you only take this trade if you agree with my analysis. If you don't agree my style of getting this entry, do not get it. Okay. I see a possible zone here, okay? This lines up with this swing low. It lines up with this swing high and then price broke. Usually when this happens, this is called an overlap. Usually price will come down here, retest this area, okay? It, need, it usually retests this area. If it rejects to break this area, this is the area where traders will enter for a buy. Okay, so that means price is going to do something like this. Okay, I kind of see it. I don't love this entry, but because I'm trying to get a second entry, this is what I'm going for. Okay. I'm going to give you the setup, okay? But I'm going to tell you later what I think about it. Okay. My hope is that price pulls back to this area. Here, it rejects. It fails to break. And here, you will get in for the buy. Okay, so that's one. I need to now look for Fibonacci levels to confirm that this is, in fact, a strong area of entry. Uh, okay, the 38.2 is lining up there. Uh, that's something. I would, I would always prefer having a lot of different people actually levels lining up in the same area. Let me see what other levels I can find. Two, three, nope. One, two, three, nope. I need to think about this. Okay, other than the 38.2, I don't see how I could possibly draw another Fibonacci level in this area. So I would say this is the possible second entry for buy and go. I'm going to say it's not as good as this one. This is the best one. 1991 is the best entry. But in the event we already missed it, our job as a trader is to find the next one, right? So the next one that I can find here, I don't love it, but I, like, I do see it. Okay, so that's one. The second thing I'm going to do is pull out all the indicators I would use. Indicators that I would use, RSI. Ichimoku stochastics. When I'm pulling out Ichimoku stochastics, the only reason I'm pulling this out, right, 
sorry, RSI and stochastics. The only reason I'm pulling out RSI and stochastics um, is to find Fibonacci, uh, sorry, divergence. Okay, for those who know what divergence is, it means that price, price is going up on the charts. Okay, like we agree, right? Price is going up on the charts. But on, on RSI or stochastics, the oscillator is showing that it's going down. Okay, that is our sign or rather going down. Okay, you need to follow the same length that you put on the charts. Okay, so the only reason I pull out stochastics and RSI is to look for diversion. Why? Because in the past I have experienced, okay, this is my own experience. This is why when you win or lose a trade, you need to come back and review your trade. Okay, don't be a, don't be a lazy trader and, and don't come back and review your trade. Okay, you need to know why certain things are happening. Okay, so there was this one time I took four trades and I lost all four trades. It was very strange to me because when I did the analysis for the four, four trades, all four trades was telling me that it's a sell. All four trades was telling me it's a sell. So I went back to review what I did wrong. I was like, I don't understand where I did wrong. Where was the sign? How come I saw a sell? Why is everything a buy? Okay, later on, I found out all four charts that I took, these were all Forex pairs, by the way, all four trades, actually RSI showed me that there was a bullish divergence. So if I had just pulled out RSI, I would have saw the bullish divergence and I would have been more careful and I wouldn't have lost the four trades. Okay, so that's why now it is a practice for me. I always pull out RSI and stochastics to confirm that there's no divergence. The only way I get in for a buy if is if there's no divergence. If there's divergence, I'm out. I'm out. It's not worth it. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to do it a second time. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's see what stochastic is saying. I mean, sorry, Ichimoku is saying. Ichimoku is basically saying that price is sell. Right now, I'm calling for a buy. Uh, let me see. I'm starting to do the analysis. Okay, Ichimoku, we had this problem this morning as well. Okay, so this morning, I was calling for a buy as well. But Ichimoku on the smaller time frame is showing that it's a sell. If I go to the four hours, Ichimoku is actually showing buy. Okay, so the smaller time frames are telling me that it is a sell. The bigger time frames are still on the buy. That's why I still chose to go ahead with the buy uh, this morning. Okay, uh, this is very tricky. Okay, why do I know Ichimoku is telling me? Because price is moving below the cloud and the conversion line is below the grace line. Okay, so Ichimoku is not agreeing with analysis. Ichimoku is telling us to like cut it, like this plan is not working out. Don't go through with it. Okay, let's see what RSI and stochastics are saying. Mm, I don't see a divergence. Okay, it is quite aligned with the charts. I mean, honestly, if you see a divergence, it's very obvious. The charts is going up, but on stochastics is going down. But everything looks quite aligned. So you can see on the charts that price is making lower highs here. Okay, this is slight lower high here. On stochastics, it's doing the same thing. Okay, it's pulled down. On the stochastics, it pulled down as well. Uh, I don't see a divergence. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to, okay, RSI, don't, don't see a divergence either. It's doing the same thing as stochastics. Okay, so both RSI and stochastics is not telling us otherwise. Um, Ichimoku is not agreeing with our trade. Should we get in for this buy? That is the question here. Should you get into a buy if there's no supporting evidence to get into the buy? Let me go back to the four hours. If I find a reason on the four hours to get in, I will get in. There's very little reason. It's very, very little reason that price will come here and then lose. There is like there is a chance, but the probability is not high. Okay, remember the only difference with gambling and trading is that gambling, you just go in, it's like you play blackjack in the casino, it's 48% chance you either win or lose, right? 
the reason why trading is not gambling is because trading is calculated risk. So from this setup, I kind of know what is my probability of winning. I have a very low problem. I have a 55% confidence, confidence that price is going to buy from 2007. Okay. I have a very low confidence that price is going to come here and bounce. Although there is some barrier and some resistance there, I don't think this barrier and this resistance is strong enough to stop price from breaking through, especially since the smaller time frame is already, is already showing that there's a trend reversal. Okay, so instead, what I'm going to give you guys is I'm going to go back to my initial setup. Okay, if for some reason, okay, if for some reason, price comes back down here a second time. For some reason, it comes back. It just wants to retest. It, it came here the first time. It didn't break, right? Couldn't break. For some reason, it just wants to come here a second time and try to break it again. If it fails to break, this is where I will consider getting in for the buy. Okay? Unless it comes to this area, I'm not going to get in for a buy. Why? Because this area is a possible entry, but it looks like a very low probability trade. Okay, it doesn't look like it's strong enough to, to break price. Okay, the door is not strong enough to hold Bob, if you know what I mean. How do you identify divergence? Again, if the charts is showing that it's higher high on diversion, a diversion will show that RSI, Stochastics, MACD is showing a lower high. Lower high. Okay, so diversion just means that it's different from what the chart is showing. Okay, so in the event price comes here a second time, that is the only time I will be getting in for this buy trade for gold. Why can't we get in for a sell now? We can get in for a sell. The smaller time frame is showing a sell. We can get in for a sell. But the thing is, the bigger time frame has not confirmed a trend reversal. The bigger time frame, you guys see that? Do you see that the conversion line just passed the baseline? So the blue line has just passed the red line. Blue line has just passed the red line. This is a sign of bearishness. I have a feeling. Okay. Everything is starting to show trend reversal. We have two choices now. Number one, you stay out. Okay, number two, you wait for price to come here, you get in for a buy because you are trying, you are hoping price rejects this area a second time. Okay, you are hoping that the bearish momentum, yeah, sit on your hand until four hours confirm. Number three, you can take all the signals that you see. When we go down to small time frame, we will see all the signals that there is going to be a trend. There is a start of a trend reversal possible trend reversal. If you want to take the risk, honestly, you can consider looking for a sell entry instead. I personally don't want to do that because I feel like for goal, I'm looking at goal, right? I feel like there's just that slightly, I feel like there's a little bit more room up before the sell happens. I do think that there's going to be a trend reversal. Of course, nothing goes up forever, okay? But I do believe that it's not at its peak yet. I think that there is a little bit of room left for it to go up, at least to this resistance area. Then maybe from this resistance area, that it's going to reverse, okay? Because, but other than that, you guys can consider a sell. If you, I'm not going to give you a sell entry. Mine is definitely going to be a buy. My buy is going to be same, 1990. If price comes here a second time for some reason, you can get in for that 1990. The risk to reward for this is if it gets back to the second time, if it doesn't get back here, two point five, um, one to two point five. Okay, because I'm using quite a big stop loss. Okay, so 
that means if you're getting from here, if price hits your stop loss, you lose 1%. If price doesn't hit your stop loss from here, you enter and it reverses, uh, you make 2.5%. Okay, so that's XAUUSD. I am still going to stick that it is a buy. Um, yes, I do see all the trend reversals on a small time frame, but I, I am a little bit more biased of the buy. Okay, a little bit more biased that it is still there is still a bit room for price to go up. Okay, other than that, um, I do someone requested. Okay, we've got 10 more minutes. I'm going to quickly do analysis on two of this. USD, JPY. USD, JPY by Andile. Okay, we're going to quickly do this and then we're going to do Jamilu's EUR, USD and then we're done for the day. Okay. Let's see, let's see. USD JPY. I only have five minutes on each chart, so hopefully I don't miss any crucial information. There is no up or down. I use higher highs and higher lows to predict price movement. In this case, price is making a lower high and then it makes a higher low. Okay? It makes a lower high but it's, it has not made a lower low. The lower low should be somewhere around here. Uh, this is not a complete move yet. Okay, so that's fine. Let's see what else I can identify. That's fine, that's fine. We don't need to force it. Possible sell coming. Possible sell coming, not confirmed. Let's see what the small time are saying. That looks like it's a 50% Fibonacci retracement. Hmm. Not lining up. So ideally, what you want to see is price. Um, okay, I'm going to move this to the 61. I can see a reaction here. I see a breakout here. Okay. Okay, I know what I'm going to call. Uh, possible buy from here. Okay, this is just my very rough analysis. My stop loss will be here. If I'm wrong, I want to be wrong fast. If I'm correct, that's good. If I'm wrong, that's, that's okay. Stop me out. I'll look for my next trade. This would be a... One to two, eight trade. If you lose, you lose 1%. You win, you win 2.8%. Okay? Risk to work is super important to me, by the way, guys. It is super duper important to me. If I don't see a good risk to work trade, I don't even get in because it doesn't make sense. Okay, yikes. This is definitely our take profit error. Okay, this is definitely a take profit error. My very quick analysis on USD JPY, I think it's gonna move to 134.655. Okay, this is what I am seeing. Okay, hopefully I am not wrong. Okay, I'm gonna give you my reasons why I think that number one, price is moving in an uptrend. Okay, you can see price moving in uptrend. Okay, so it should continue moving in uptrend. At least to the take profit. Whatever it does after the take profit, I don't care. It doesn't concern me anymore because it already reached my take profit. 
my whole aim is to make money. I already did make my money. I don't care whatever happens after I make the money. Okay, so I do think price is going to reach this take profit area. Let's see what the indicators are saying. I bet Jimoku is saying it's up. There's no. Yep, uptrend, Ichimoku agreeing. No divergence, no divergence. Higher highs, higher lows, okay, no divergence, price possibility. Uh, RSI is agreeing. Let's see what stochastics is saying. Settings for stochastics is 21, five for, 21, five and three. Okay, why we use this is because in the past from backtesting, we have noticed that price reacts very nicely of 21, five and three, especially for Forex and gold. Okay, Forex and Go. I cannot promise you it works the same for all charts, but for Forex and Go, 21, 5, and 3 works very nicely. Okay. Don't know why Stochastics has to do this. There's a divergence on Stochastics. You guys see how it's making higher highs here? On Stochastics, it's making higher lows. Okay, this is something to be concerned of. Higher highs here. Okay, this is very concerning. Oh, sorry. This is concerning, but it's okay. RSI didn't show that version. Okay, if you were to get in for this buy, just take note that there is stochastics is already showing some kind of mini diversions. Okay, so if you want to get into this trade, take note that there are risk because of this. Just because of this, my confidence level immediately drops to like 70%. Just a while ago, I was like 85% confident that price is going to get here. I was like 80, 85% confident that price is going to get here. Right now, I do see stochastics acting a little funny. I think there's still a chance price is going to get here, but there is now a 30% chance it's not going to get there. Okay, so that's my calculated risk. Okay, other than that, it's saying the same thing as a chart. So how stochastics work, how we usually use stochastics is that if it reaches a resistance or support, we think that it's going to reverse. So if we look at stochastics, we can see here that there's still a little bit more room for price to go up. Same as here, there's still a little bit more room for price to go up. Okay, so I'm hoping price goes up here, it will come up here as well. So there is a possibility for a short entry for a buy. The entry I'm looking at is 133.7 one, one, three, three area. Okay, 133.7 three, three area. The lower you can get, the better, obviously. Okay, so 133.725 three, three area would be the best, the most ideal entry or stop loss just slightly below it because if it doesn't reverse means this analysis is wrong. If this is an analysis is wrong, I want to be kicked out fast. I want to be kicked out of this trade fast. Okay, Jamilo is check asking, can you check Fibonacci projection? Yep, Fibonacci projection showing the exact same area. I am quite confident that price is going to get here. But why is stochastics wrong? Okay, there's a very high chance price is gonna get there. Remember I said price is like a magnet. Okay, price is like a magnet. Price is attracted to key levels. This take profit area is definitely a key level. So I think price will be very attracted to it and want to go to this area. Okay, so uh, this is what I have for USD JPY. Okay, let me just quickly do URUSD requested by Jamilu. Okay, very nice. Very clear uptrend. Very, very clear uptrend. I love it. 
not so much on the daily time frame, but on the four hours, very nice and clear uptrend. Okay, we're gonna beg on this uptrend. We're gonna try to beg on this uptrend. Hopefully, we're not so unlucky that suddenly price decides to do a trend reversal. If I have to do a very quick analysis, immediately I would think this is my entry for the buy. Stop loss is here. Okay, but of course I'm only using five minutes to chart. If I had a little bit more time, I might see different things, but one look, this is what I see. I do see a resistance there and a possibility of price reversing from there. Uh, let me see what is the possibility of price reversing from there. Let's plot some levels. Not lining up very nicely. Not lining up very nicely makes me a bit skeptical. On top of that, there's not a lot of rejection here. You know when price is going to reverse when the candles here, there's a lot of rejection. Do you see? There's no rejection. These are like full body candles. Okay. Uh, let's see a projection. Hmm. Okay. I do see another level here. That's the problem. I do want to get in on a buy for this because I'm just begging on the trend, but the entry, it looks like it could either be this first entry here or this second one at the bottom here. Okay, it looks like if it doesn't reject and reverse here, the next one will be here. So what I'm gonna do is put my stop loss here. Okay, the best ideal entry to get in on of obviously is the lower one. Okay, you know what? Uh, if it doesn't reach this low part, don't even bother getting in. Okay, because we don't wanna take the risk. Okay, we're not going to take this risk. If it reverses from here and we didn't get in, that's totally fine. Remember, whenever you are trading, you don't have to regret anything. Okay? You just need to remember, I did this because at that point of time, this is the best decision that I could come up with. Okay, This is the best decision. So at this current point of time, if I were to say this was the entry, I, won't, I cannot say that this is the best decision. Why? Because this full body candlestick is not rejecting this area at all. If price was really going to reverse here, honestly, we, will, we would start to see rejection in these candlesticks we will start to see like a lot of wicking like this. Do you see all this wicking? If it wicks, it's your candlesticks sign of telling you, hey, uh, I don't like this area. I'm gonna reverse from this area, but price is already in this area and it's still not wicking. It's just doing full body candles. It makes me think that this is not the entry. It makes me think that price wants to go slightly lower somewhere around here, then only it goes up. Okay, if price does that, I will not put my stop loss here anymore, I'll put my stop loss here. Okay, then we'll be playing a very short trade instead. USD, JPY. Okay, Ichimoku is okay with our setup. Ichimoku is agreeing with our setup, I won't say completely, but it is agreeing with our setup because our entry just nice falls on the cloud of the Ichimoku. The cloud of the Ichimoku is also a form of support and resistance. <laughs> Very divergence. Okay, this is a very good example of what a bearish divergence looks like. Price is going up here, making higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. On RSI, it's making lower lows. Do you guys see that? It is making lower lows. It didn't do a trend reversal though. Okay, this is a very weak analysis, but I would say I am still a bit more biased on the buy. 
I would still get in on a buy, but I'll use a very, very small stock. I will use a very, very uh, small lot size. So basically my three trades, EURUSD, USDJPY, and XAUUSD are all buy trades, right? Yeah, it's all buy trades. Um, two is going against the USD and one is for the USD, okay? So don't think there's news today, right? Building permits. Well, I don't think this is important news. Important news will be like FOMC, jobless claims, um, whatever data. Okay, building permits. I don't think this is important news. I don't think it will affect the market much. Oh yes, at the bottom of trading view, there's this circle that you can click on and it will tell you what news there is. Okay, there's this lightning and you can see what headlines they have for your USD. Okay, so I am still biased for a buy, but the buy is only at this level. Okay, that's it for today. Do we have your Telegram link? Uh, sure. Uh, again, if you add me now, don't take it personally, okay? I'm not replying you because I'm purposely ignoring you. I'm not replying you because I'm very busy this period trying to get ready for the coming of my baby. Okay, so um, just take note that in a few months, I will create a group chat. I'll add everybody into that group chat. You guys can talk to yourselves in that group chat. It's a trading group chat. And then, yeah, I will, I'll definitely be updating on that setups. If I see high probability setups, I'll definitely like just, hey guys, I see a high probability setup on goal. Because I mean, I would definitely miss doing this analysis for you guys, just that I also want to prioritize being a mom. So this way, you guys during my group chat, at least I can still, you know, I can still update you guys once in a while. Okay, so thanks guys. Thanks for joining. Um, I don't, um, didn't see a very high probability setup today, but I guess today's setups were okay. They're like so-so, okay? A high probability setup is a setup that will make you a lot of money, okay? But we didn't see one today and that's totally fine. Okay, so I'll catch you guys next Monday. Okay, bye Richard, bye Johan. Bye, Paul. Bye, Ram. Um, bye, Dick B. Bye, Hamid. Ray. Uh, yes, this session is recorded. It will be posted on Tickmail's YouTube. Um, other than that, bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Eugene. Thanks, Salgado. Sorry, I know I'm calling some of your, your last name. It's because I cannot pronounce your first name. So I... Not that I cannot, I, I don't want to accidentally insult you by pronouncing the wrong name. So I just pronounce the name that I can pronounce. Okay, so bye Harsh. Bye Webster. Thanks guys. I will catch you guys next week. Uh, this chat is moving a little bit too fast. Okay, bye everyone. Take care.